All right, Mass, how you doing? Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Funny Astronauts, or at least so we hope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Garrett, remember, folks, don't get your hopes up. We're not saying we're funny. We're just saying we're funny for astronauts. That's, Keep the that's bar low, claim. man. That's good. But this uh, gives us a chance to see what's going on with each other, Garrett. This is good. That's right. Yeah. Today, and we actually, we, we got some organization here. We're not just randomly making this stuff up. I just want you to know we're actually prepared did our homework today's topic is surviving survival survival training that's right um i didn't know we had any homework though <laughs> i didn't do any homework. Right. but we can you talk can... we can certainly talk about uh our experiences as uh, new astronauts one of the first things we did after we were showed up at uh at nasa was to go through survival training and actually garrett I remember hearing about this, about getting being warned by NASA about survival training when I got my uh, my welcome letter. Did you get that same a similar letter? Like we get a phone call saying you become an astronaut, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you get and a then, letter. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you got a packet of information that came in the uh, in the mail, and it was like you know kind of a big yellow envelope, and and it said, "Welcome to the astronaut office. Congratulations." And then I think around paragraph two, it was practice your swimming because you're going to have to pass <laughs> yeah. a swim test. Yeah. And uh, Garrett, I don't know if you know that we talked in the first episode, I think that I was afraid of heights. I was also yeah. afraid of the water. I don't like the water either. You know, I grew up, <laughs> I grew up in New York, in New York where, you know, we didn't go in the water. It was too cold. I, I, and we had, if you look down the East River, what do you see, Garrett? You see bridges. And if you could look under, you would see tunnels. There's no reason to get in the water. You just go over the bridge or you go through the tunnel. You know, you know, we didn't swim for it. We, you know, we did it a civilized way. So, and I was always skinny. I never, and I didn't like to get cold in the, in the pool. My mother forced me to go to swim lessons. I never liked it. I was always, and I was tall, so I could fake being in the water. Like I was, you know, I could just like tippy toe down in the deep end even and slub my head above. So I never, that's I never so liked that's the so water. That's not fair. It's not fair. When, well, you know, but then I get this, I get, we get this letter and it says uh -huh. practice your swimming. And I was horrified. But then I was so grateful, Garrett, because you know all the what we talked about in the last episodes is about going through all the tests and the questions, and never once did they ask the you know how to swim, and and so I didn't have that. I never had to answer. So I was glad they never asked me. But then I saw that. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to get ready for this, and I immediately started practicing my swimming, as a you know to get ready to become an astronaut. I never thought that would happen, but that's what happened. I had to become a swimmer. Wow. Wow, it's uh, who knew that was a job requirement? But uh, I remember, so I remember getting there, and then they told us that we're gonna have to. And, and just so you know, the reason that they have us do this survival training, we do this water survival, and then we do the land survival. The whole reason for this is um, we fly these T thirty eight jets, right? And they have ejection seats. So if you're having a bad day, if you're having a really bad day, you you grab the handles, you punch out, and you eject out of the out of the T thirty eight, and you could come down somewhere and then you have to, they want you to be able to take care of yourself until help arrives. So that's why you got to learn how to survive. And my argument with this was, I, I, I found this to be kind of silly, right? Because think about this, right? We only fly those things mass, right? Over the continental US, right? That's where we go. We go like Houston to Florida or, or you know, for the to the Cape or we go, you know, around the country. We go all around the country. We never yep. fly to like, you know, uh, Papua New Guinea. We never fly to Papua New Guinea or anything, right? Or uh, <laughs> I don't even know where know, that is. We, I don't even Madagascar. know where to go. Or luckily, we didn't have to go there. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even find it. So, uh, so we only fly. It, it, the thing that can't go that far anyway it doesn't have that big gas tank. So, no, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. So, so my point was this: if we're going to be flying over the continental U.S. and I have to eject, all I need to survive is like a credit card, all right? Because like, <laughs> what are the odds that we won't be within walking distance of a Starbucks? Yeah, <laughs> virtually zero over the year, right? <laughs> right? Okay, well, just give me a credit card. I'll go in, I'll get a nice mocha frappuccino, and I'll be sitting there waiting for you to come pick me up. That's all I need. Well, but they said, no, you got to go do the survival. Well, how about, I mean, you would limit, if that's, I mean, you could just do your flight plans over major highways. That's what you could have done. <laughs> but what would right. you go out to California and you had to go over to Rockies? Then what would you have done? Over the Rockies? Yeah, what happens if you had to bail out over the Rockies or something like that? Probably come right down in the middle of Vail, and I'll go. I'll go into the lodge, and I'll get a bowl of chili. Or how about in the middle of that? We said, when fine. we used to go to uh, when we go to Florida from Houston, we used to go over the Gulf. What happened over yeah. the Gulf? The Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, it's, it's 
it's warm wa water. You give me a floaty and like a pina colada, and I'll, I'll be okay, man. I'm gonna be fine. I'm telling you. Well, they kind I don't of need the survival floaty. training. I, they made I me like do it anyway. Thinking, no. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, so where did you go? Where did you go for? You do water first well, or we, land? Well, for, what happened is that we 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 had a first we had to pass a swim test. To me, it started with the swim test oh, at, at NASA so before we could before we could go to this experience. Because I think what happened was is that years past, astronauts would show up and they would send them to the survival training, and you go to Pensacola for uh, that's where you went as well for water survival, and I think the Navy was like. These people can't swim. You know, we got to we got we got to start from scratch. And we're actually, you know, like you saw those movies. You know, in these movies when they send people to the to the military and they scream at like officer and a gentleman and full metal jacket and they're screaming at the. That's what I think normally goes on, but they couldn't do that to us because we were ast civilian astronauts. So they, you know, I think they they told NASA, "What's the matter with you? Get us, you know, make sure they can swim." So they <laughs> they what they made us do is pass the the swim test before we could go through the training. And we had to demonstrate that we could pass that swim test. Do you remember doing that? Again, I understand the Navy. If you're going to join the Navy, you probably should know how to swim. Okay. But we're going uh, to space. There's no water in space, <laughs> right? Navy, I get it. You're in a boat. Okay. You're in the ocean. But you're in space. Why do you need to know how to swim, right? You don't, you don't even have to walk in space, <laughs> right? Why well, swim? I, and I'm, I'm with the Garrett. Like I said, I didn't need to, I grew up in New York. I didn't need to swim then either. Take the bridge. <laughs> right. Take the bridge. You know, and most of the bridges you can walk over. You don't have, you know, Brooklyn Bridge, you just walk over for free. Uh, Instead exactly. of you have to pay a toll. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, I guess. I don't, but we did, but, but they, they it, it, when we got to Pensacola, they did do, put us through, they, we had to swim. I, remember, I forgot the distance. We had to swim like a long way, wearing the yeah. combat boots, the flight suit, the, the helmet, wearing the helmet. We had to swim. And then they hit us with like big, pretend rainstorms with like big shower heads <laughs> yeah. that would like shower down on you. It's like, yeah, ridiculous. Oh, I remember all that stuff, but going back <laughs> to the test that <laughs> yeah, I had to pass in yeah. order to get this, there was, there's a couple of things. I, it was a long swim and you had to demonstrate the different strokes. You had to demonstrate the backstroke and the, and the, and the side stroke. Do you remember this? Yes. Do you remember any, did they make yes, you do, I do that stuff? I, I do. Yeah. So what we did is uh, there was we got together as a as before we went and took the test in Houston it was our first it was going to be the first thing we were going to do, and we got together as a as a as a you know, whoever needed help not very many of us me and Charlie Camarda, the other guy <laughs> from Queens he was the other guy that couldn't swim so the two of us you know we're like we don't know how to swim, so we got we went for like remedial lessons with our classmates and uh, we had like Heidi Piper was a Navy diver and some other like and then Piers was there. You know, our friend oh. Piers Sellers, who was a British guy, who was a naturalized citizen. And so, but what he was great at is he could talk. He, he was very leisurely as a swimmer. He's like swimming, I guess, the British way. Keep your head out of the water. He was good with the with the breaststroke. And I'm like, don't you have to put your head in the water? He goes, no, no need. Just look around. Enjoy yourself. So Piers was actually never mind. And these <laughs> other divers and everything, they would they want to just like really swim. But it feels like, no, just it's like this, this very relaxing way to swim. So I use I, I use his methods to to prepare, and then we got there, and there was we had to do these different strokes, and I'm standing next to Philippe Perrin. Do you remember Philippe from my oh, from yeah. my astronaut yeah. class? We called him Pepe. He was a French guy, very cool. He was like the he was like a like a French James Bond. He was like super cool. <laughs> I thought this guy should go. This guy should always be in a tuxedo, and there would be nothing wrong with it if he no matter where he was. He he was just very cool, very 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 sophisticated. So Mike Fink is in the water trying to do, I think, I don't know what he was doing. It was like, it was, I think it was side stroke time, but it was kind of like side stroke, a little back. And next thing you know, his feet would be coming at you. I don't know what he was doing. It was like the craziest. He's he probably doing synchronized swimming, that guy. I know that guy. I don't, probably... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was doing, but it was really wacky. And, and Philippe is next to me. And I'm like, what is he, what is he doing? And Philippe was really good friends with him. Peppy at this point, only after a week already, they were like good friends. So as, as, as Spanky gets to the wall, we're watching this before it's our turn, uh, Pepe hits him on the head. And then Spanky looks up and, and Pepe just leans down with his French accent and goes, and uh, what stroke is this? There's no one, he couldn't recognize the stroke or some wacky thing. That I remember with Spanky, the other, and Mike Frank is, Spanky's his nickname. The other thing I remember, Garrett, is going through the, you remember the treading water they made us do? Oh yeah. With the helmets and the boots and everything, we had all this stuff on. 
And uh, I think it was, I don't know how long it was, but it was for a while. But the first part, you could use your hands and your legs. And then the second part, it was something else. You could, but the, you couldn't use your hands. You couldn't use your arms, just your legs. And then the third area, the, like the last however many minutes, your hands had to be out of the water. Do you remember this? That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So with I remember the, like yeah, going crazy. And... He's like, ah, I'm trying to keep my hands out. I keep my head. I don't want to drown. We're doing this. And it's, he had, if your hands went under the water, you failed. If, right. you know, but if you went underwater, that was okay. Because I look over and I see Spanky and I see his hands. His hands are out of the water. He's gone. He's missing. And I don't know where he is, but his head is he's but his hands are out of the water and he passed. It didn't matter that the rest of you was underneath, as long as your hands are out of the water. So we all passed and then we got to go to Pensacola to do the the survival train. Wow. Well, all right. So that's good you got through that. So then you get oh. down to Pensacola. I remember I remember being down there and that was quite the uh, 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 interesting week because you do all kinds of crazy stuff down there. They do the officer and the gentleman thing where you're in the dunker and yeah. you're sitting there in the, in the like a mock up of a cockpit and they plunge you into the pool and then they turn you upside down and you got to get out. You got to take off your seatbelt and everything. And uh, that was pretty wild. And the, the uh, and then and then there was like another exercise where you're on the back of like this little mini aircraft carrier and this boat starts pulling you away and you're parasailing. You got to parachute just like you're doing a club med, right? But the only difference is when you get up to a couple hundred feet or whatever, then you like release the boat, the, the cable, and then you fall down in the parachute, like you're parachuting into the water. That was crazy. There's all kinds of, the, 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 the helicopter, did you do the helicopter pickup thing? Oh, sure, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. that's the part of the thing. You had to do all these things, yeah. That was actually one of my biggest, uh problems like they people ask me like was there ever a time in the training that was really hard i thought maybe i wasn't going to cut it and that was my moment so i'm out there <laughs> and i'm floating around in the bay of uh pensacola pensacola they call that pensacola bay i think and yep. i'm out there and I'm, <laughs> I'm floating around and then this black hawk helicopter comes and they dangle this cable into the water and you have to find the cable and hook up on your harness and they hoist you up right but what's the, the main thing to do before you hook up, what do you do with the cable? Do you remember? Yeah, you, you, you let put it, you, you, you lick it. No, you let <laughs> it hit the water first. <laughs> That's right, because it'd be static electricity. You want to hit the water, let it be grounded before you touch it with your right. tongue. Right, I remembered everything that would get me killed in the training, <laughs> I remembered. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's that's good. That that was a major point they made. That's good. Yep. So, so if the helicopter's coming, and it's whipping up the water, and all of, all of a sudden, it's like the perfect storm. Right. I got these waves. It's hitting me in the face. It's getting under my helmet. I'm, I'm like in just I'm drinking half of the Pensacola Bay and, and, and I can't see a damn thing. I can't. You know, and I, I don't know if it hit the hook, the, hook the water or not. I can't see anything because all I got is spray in my face. I, I'm like, I, I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. And that lasted like about 10 seconds. <laughs> I had that feeling. And then the helicopter is right on top of you. And it's yeah. like you're in the eye of the storm, right? Yeah. It all gets quiet and calm and serene. And I'm like, oh, there's a cable right there. And as it's in the water. I swim, I, pick, I, I hook it up. And then that's it. That was my big moment of fear. Up. And they, then they then. hoist you up on the, on the helo. Yeah. And then yeah. what happened to you when, when they hoist you up there? What, what happens when you get in the helo? I remember getting in there and it was kind of cool. We didn't have like a, it wasn't an, we, we had like a rescue helicopter. It was, it had like Navy on the bottom of it. And I remember getting up and it had like one of the little frogmen guys, you know what the, you ever see those little frogs with the cigar? Like the, I think it was like the <laughs> Navy seal frogman. He had like one of those, a picture of that frog. And it was pretty cool. I've seen that in the movies. And these two guys are there and I think we had to sit in the, uh, sit in there and say hello and then go back down. I think wait, that's wait, what wait. it was. You mean you didn't get the cookie? I don't remember any cookies. No. You That's got a the cookie? thing. They give you a cookie. You no. didn't get a, I can't believe you. Did you get it? Did, did, did you piss them off? Did you do something wrong? That uh, probably. They I didn't... was. Uh, I was a very challenging student. <laughs> you got a cookie when you went inside the. They gave you a cookie. Everybody got a cookie. At least everybody no, you know that they liked got a cookie. <laughs> Apparently. No, I didn't get a cookie that you get they they pop it in your mouth you don't even have time to take a bite they just shove it in your mouth yeah. the frogman guy he shoves it in your mouth and then he kicks you right back out of the helicopter and and uh it, it literally pushes you out and then down you they lower you back down again i didn't that, even i, I didn't even take a bite of the cookie. cookie i think they hit the water and it was all soggy now i'm disappointed you, <laughs> yeah that's actually it was least of my worries was getting a cookie maybe they did give me a cookie i don't remember i was just glad to still be alive i wanted to survive survival training 
Uh, yeah. For it was it was fun going down there though. For me, it was uh, you know it was such a cool experience because you know I had you know I'd heard about these things and watched movies and like the right stuff, like you mentioned, officer and gentleman, and then you go there and uh, we weren't we didn't have to join the Navy to do this, which I was grateful for. You know, we could still yeah. be civilians and they would take care of us. But the 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 um, the chief petty officers were great. You know, those guys were. Uh, I think they saw it as kind of like a fun week to train us or something because they seem to be having fun, and uh, they demonstrated everything for us. We had this one guy that was like a was a marine a marine sergeant who was kind of the supervisor. He didn't and he I remember he went in the water and he was like Mister Survival, and he said some of you claim that you know you can't whatever you can't tread or you know, it's hard to tread. And this guy starts treading water and he's like standing on the water. He got so high out of there. He's like, so <laughs> like, look how easy this is. And the guy was like, he's got a, I don't know how he, then he went back down and you can control. He's going up and down. Like he's in an elevator. I thought he had someone like lifting him up. This guy is unbelievable with what wow. these guys could do. But it, it was, uh, it, the instruction was great. And you got to do those. Like I said, I was afraid of the water, but because of this training by step-by-step step that they did to us, by the time we did all that stuff you were talking about, I actually felt, uh, I actually felt pretty good about it. The, um, the, the, uh, you mentioned going off going off the boat, you know the parasailing thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, I mean, when we did that, uh, the instructions I remember, Gary. I don't know if you remember like this, but it was like they hook you up, and this was kind of like the graduation exercise. You know, we did all these things leading up to that big event, the helicopter thing, the stuff in the pool, the fake rain, and then we were going to do the last thing I, I, that I remember, kind of like graduation from that was doing a parasailing exercise where you go up, I don't know how high they had us, maybe a couple hundred feet or so, or, and you release from the chute and you come down on the water with your parachute. You leave from the boat and you have your chute and everything. But the, the, the thing was is that you, uh, you started on that, that boat that was pretty high off the water when I remember, right? I don't mm-hmm. know, what, maybe 20 or 30 feet or something like that. Do you remember, Garrett? How, it was pretty high off the water. It was like it's a platform, high. right? And the instructions were that you start marching in place, but, but you start marching... <laughs> Then you're going to yeah. feel a tug and you've got, I don't know, maybe 25 yards into the edge of the ship or something like this. So you, and then, then it's, you know, then it's a cliff and then the water. So we, you know, the, the instructions where you start marching, 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 and then you feel a tug and you start marching more quickly and then you start running. And then, you know, by that time you're in, going to be in the air. That's the, before you get to the end. So that's the way it's supposed to go. So I, I, there was a line of us going to do this. And I remember you had to do this twice successfully. It's the main thing. You have to do it twice. You're going to have to go through this. Mm-hmm. So Stephanie Wilson is the person in front of me. And Stephanie <laughs> Wilson, a uh, very good friend right. of mine, very good friend of ours, right in my astronaut class. Stephanie's about, I don't know, five foot tall and weighs not very much. She's basically a size of one of my legs, right? She's a very <laughs> small person. So she gets, she hooks up to this, to the boat and she takes like two steps and then boop, she's up in the air like Peter Pan. Right, <laughs> right, right. I weigh at least twice as much she does. I'm, a, I'm just a gigantic person. I don't think they did any recalibration in between runs. <laughs> so they hook me up to this thing, and they go, "Stop and watch." So I start the marching, but but I'm marching, I'm marching. Then I feel the tug, you know, and I go, "Okay, I'm walking quicker." And then I'm really getting tugged, and I start running, and I'm not getting, I'm not getting airborne, man. And I'm like running as fast <laughs> as I can, and I realize this, this is infinitely long. You know, it's only, uh-huh. what I, and sure enough, I'm running in the air and I, I go down, I go straight down, however high that was, bang, crash into the water, right? <laughs> really? Whatever that 20 or 30 feet, whatever it was, smash right in the water. And then they start dragging me. I'm getting drugged <laughs> through this water. One of my uh, life, pre- the life preserver unit that we had on, that popped, it popped on impact. <laughs> So that pop, and they're dragging me. And I think why they did, why they kept dragging me was, is we had a chute behind us. So remember, one of the things they taught us was, is that if you're if you're in the water and the chute is attached to you, Release. it will fill with water and bring you to the bottom of the ocean. And yeah. then it's then they got have trouble finding you. So they kept dragging me. I think because they didn't want me, they didn't want to stop, and then I could sink. And they wanted me to release the chute. So there's this one of the chief petty officers is screaming at me from the back of the boat, like, re- I think, which I could hardly even see because the water, you know, but she's like screaming, like, release the chute, release the chute. So I'm like, all right. So I release the chute. 
and then the shoot goes away and then they come back and they get me and so they were afraid i got hurt they had a doctor you know they had a doctor there in case someone there was a problem the doctors you know looking with the you know the light in my eye and making me do stuff make sure i didn't get hurt and i've got this you know light preserver doesn't work anymore and uh she looks at the the chief petty officer and he says to her uh he'll be okay right he's all right he didn't get hurt he's all right just shook up he's all right and she goes that's great and then she looks at me and goes you still got to do it twice like that. So that was, <laughs> of course you do so that, that I, I, here's my question um so you they drug you through the water right yeah you didn't get a cookie I didn't, have you, you didn't get a cookie i didn't get a cookie no so have you figured out who exactly did you piss off down there <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know who it was i think i know who it was when we were doing uh we were doing the, you know those things with we learn how to shoot off flares yeah you know you, you shoot off one of them was like a it was like they're like little bottle rockets they're like rockets yeah. these things right they go up pretty high you know people got to see them so it's uh <laughs> it's, it's like a little rocket uh -huh. and uh one of them was kind of like it looked like a pen maybe it's like a little pen kind of thing it was like a little thing yes. you twist very small like uh -huh. a pen, about the size of a pen and you put the cartridge in and you twist it like this and it was like a lock on it then you hit the lock so i was they were teaching us to do this with this with this rocket and they were live rockets these little mm -hmm. rocket things we had you know they would go off and apparently this one chief petty officer claimed that i pointed it at her and i was like there's no way i should do part i think she was just trying to make right. but that's so what it my was. question because i think when i was getting it was the same pe petty officer when i was getting drunk through the water and i i didn't know if she was saying release your shoot or you point that rocket at me and this is what you get I think that's what it was. I think she was, she was like, I, 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 she was screaming at me the whole time. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I don't think I really pointed it at her, but I think yeah. she, I think that's what I think happened. you're onto something. Yeah. Well, maybe I, that, maybe that's what it is. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't have to deal with any of that, fortunately. But, um, yeah. but one thing I do remember is, I think it was like the end of our first day. And, and remember when you're out there in the bay, it's kind of disgusting. You know, it's, it's like, uh, it's not the world's cleanest bay down there. It's kind of full of, it's got some pollution in there, whatever. And, and, they, and so you don't want to wear your nice NASA flight suit for these training exercises. Plus, it's hot, you're sweating, it's nasty. That's so another reason these... to stay out of the water and use the bridges. We knew what <laughs> exactly. we were doing in the Northeast. Yes. So they give you like these, these rental suits, right? Like the, these uh, green um, <laughs> flight suits that like have been, I, I think mine still said like property of, uh, John Paul Jones, you know, <laughs> like they've been around there forever. The and, uh, Ch Chester Nimitz, uh, wore, you know, wore yeah. this suit. So, so, <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm wearing this, the, the, we're all wearing these disgusting and plus it didn't fit me. Right. It's like, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of short, so it's, it's bagging. I had to uh, like roll it up around the ankles and they stunk. They were like so stinky, these nasty things. And and so at the end of that long day, we come walking in, very hot Florida day. We come walking in as a class uh, and and uh, to, to, to go take a shower because we needed it bad. <laughs> and I'm walking right next to my classmate, Leland Melvin. And Leland and I are walking along. And Hans Schlegel, Hans Schlegel, great guy, uh, German astronaut from the European Space Agency. And uh, he was a member of our class. And he, to help everybody out, to be a nice guy, he went ahead and uh, tried to scout out, like, where we had no idea where to go. So he went ahead to scout out where the lockers are, where the facilities are, and he figured it all out. So he's up ahead, and Leland and I are, walk, are walking along in these, trudging in these nasty suits to go get clean. And he looks at us, and he, said, he looks right at me, and he goes, Garrett, this way to the showers. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned to Leland and I said, you know, man, my people fell for this once. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> when you hear this way to the showers, all yeah. right, in that accent, <laughs> you know, it's not. It's, did, you, did you say that to Hans? No, I never told him about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Leland started cracking up. He got it. <laughs> uh, oh, this way to the showers. No. Oh, man. Hans, so Hans and I, you know, we're, we're um, um, uh, this is not about survival, yeah. but just really quickly, one of the things we have to do, we'll talk about this in a future episode, but one yeah, of the things you have good. to do when you're, when you're a new astronaut class is you got to put on the, uh, the entertainment at the Christmas yeah. party for the rest of the astronauts, right? You get, you, <laughs> you're the, you're the entertainment. So we did skits and stuff and, um, 
Hans and I did a uh, Hans and Franz. Uh, I gotta you forget. know that Hans and Franz from Saturday Night Live? Yeah. We pump you up, you know? We we did that thing, and he he was Hans. I, I was really, Franz. That was really the highlight of your skits, I thought, uh, it, him doing that Hans and Franz stuff. That was, was hysterical. Fun. So he, he's yeah. got a great sense of humor. I, I, oh, I do, yeah, I do yeah, want to yeah, add that. Good. Now I'm feeling bad about uh, you know, <laughs> the other thing. Went high, but uh, but it's hard to escape your past, you know. So so <laughs> we 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 go uh, later on that same trip. We we go to have an awesome museum there at Pensacola, the Museum of Naval Aviation. At, or oh something yeah, like that. so yeah, that's their national museum down there. It's great. It's oh, incredible. Yeah. They have like every sh- airplane that ever flew for the Navy. Yeah, and and it's, it's it's an incredible collection, and this really nice docent was taking us on a tour, mm. and and he starts with like the World War One stuff, and then and then World War Two, and he's like, oh yes, this this uh, airplane, uh, you know the um, the uh, Corsair was uh, produced to try to counter the German threat during uh, during the invasion of Normandy or whatever, and Hans <laughs> Hans is looking his eyes roll and he's like, I. Again with the Germans, always the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> always the bad guys, you know. It's like you know, <laughs> <laughs> poor Hans. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was funny. You know, like these stories you're saying. And this was one of the first things we did as a as a group, as with our astronaut classes. There was a lot of good uh, getting to know your bonding experiences doing this sort of stuff. Oh, but I was for fun. The thing, the the uh, the thing about that getting drugged through the water, you know, it, with me, you know, you always worried about getting a nickname. No nicknames. We could go go do a whole episode, I think, on nicknames. Mm-hmm. But uh, with with me, uh, I was in danger of getting a nickname that I didn't wasn't really happy about because some of the people with with you know some of my classmates because of the way i was getting drugged and i'd get a little airborne and then i'd get you know they dragged me again it was like up you know bang bang and so they they were calling me teabag for a while oh that was no. very weird i didn't like that nickname they're like oh they call me and uh why, why, why exactly said, why exactly did you not like that nickname i don't know i just felt like uh <laughs> mass was my was my name was kind of my real name i didn't like you think teabag was a good one i didn't think that'd be a good one you know that yeah, means something like else it. right yeah, I was like, oh no, but you can't, you know, you, if you get a nickname, you can't help. But it, luckily, it didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, it didn't. It didn't stay with me, so I was happy that it didn't. Yeah, the, the other thing very, I remember you're, about you're, that you're is very that, lucky. What's that? You're very lucky that that one didn't. Yes, stay. I'm, I didn't go look, look it up on the on, or go to urbandictionary.com and look. Oh, it, it means something later. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jason, we got to cut it out. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know half the things that you know that people say. Hey, you didn't, right, don't, don't worry. What about do it. I know? I'm in my own. I'm in my own cocoon in my life. I watch baseball games. Uh, uh, the other, so, the other thing about that, I remember with the, with the, uh, with, with Charlie Camarda, who was, you know, the other, uh, New Yorker who was challenged with all this water stuff. I remember we were, we were learning how to blow up our, our LPUs, a life preserver unit, right? Now those things are supposed to go when you, when you pull a little cord on them, these CO2 cartridges inflate them automatically, right? But if that didn't work, Garrett, do you remember what you needed to do with those yeah, life yeah, preserving units? Manually inflate, just like they show you on the when you in the airplane on the airliners when they say, "Okay, you're blown to right. this tube," and they, I, I love it when they try to do that without looking uh, ridiculous. Right. So mm-hmm. you needed to learn how to do it manually, and the way that that valve worked was a little tricky. You had mm-hmm. to push in in order for it to open so that you could inflate it. You remember this? Yes. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> uh, they kind of went over that very briefly, I think. And yeah. it's always good not to be the first person to try this sort of thing. You know, we had a couple lines of people, and you jump in, you watch, and then you go in. So I was like, I'll watch the other guy. So I'm standing next to Pierce Shell. It's the second time we've mm-hmm. mentioned him. So Pierce and I stand next to each other, and Charlie jumps in the water and starts fighting with this valve <laughs> and ends up sinking to the bottom <laughs> of that pool, which is, you know, maybe about 12 feet or I don't know, 50. Uh-huh. he's at the, he's standing on the, I'm looking down and I see him standing on the bottom of the pool and there are plenty of bubbles coming up because they're not going inside of the, inside of the bag. He's, a, he's like fighting the thing. And, uh, you know, after a while, I was like, I was like one of the, you know, swimmer guys was like, Hey, I think you meet Mike, Mike want to take a look at this. So, you know, they, they helped him out. 
or he came up on his own, but it didn't work. But the thing was, is that the valve wasn't working. So Piers and I, after we see this, we're like, we better make sure we know how to work that thing. And we like turn around and like, never mind going to save our buddy. We're like, Hey, you guys go take care of him. You better make sure we don't want this to happen. So we figured out how to work that valve and then we were okay. But I remember that Charlie at the bottom trying to get, Poor guy. trying to get air Poor into guy. that thing. So, Hey, tell me, did, uh, so with that, so we did the water thing, but then there's also the land thing. Did you do, did you do the land thing with, at the Sears school? Or did you do it somewhere else? No, we did ours. Uh, we did ours one after the other down there in Florida, near Pensacola. I think uh, we stayed at the Naval Air Station, the quarters there. I think the whole time, and then he bussed us over to an area. I guess was still like Air Force Base land, uh, uh, Homestead or Eglin, or one of those places that was down there. And uh, we went on their property. They had a, you know a lot of, and that's where we did our our land survival. And uh, for that, I remember you know because we got we sat in the classroom to learn stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Even in the water, they tell you classroom and you go to the pool and you practice stuff and then you go out to the water and do a few of these exercises to pass that course. Well, it's the same thing for land survival. We had we had these courses where they tell us stuff. So anyway, anyway, they tell us how to like catch food. Like if you get stuck there, you know, we're, we're going to. And I was like, yeah, like you were saying, I'm going to be in the continental United States. You know, uh, <laughs> right. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go and kill a bear. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. stay. I'm not going to do. But they taught you how do you. You're going to trap a rabbit, a snake, and all these things, and you're going to build these traps to get this stuff. Well, first of all, at, in that area, they had constantly done these survival schools there. So, like, every animal that lived there, a little bunny or whoever's going to live there, has either been already killed or got out of there. There's nothing left. There's absolutely <laughs> right. no wildlife in these places because people get, they get there and they're starving and they can't find anything. So I really, we're going to be out there for like a, you know, a day and a half or two days. We were out there without any food. I think that's what it was. You remember Gary or something like that? Yeah. Maybe it's with like you guys. Three days or something in the field. So yeah. a few days so. out there without any food. So I'm like, I'm not going to, even if I could find a bunny rabbit, I'm not going to try to kill it. And you know, what am I, I'm not going to do that, you know, and mm -hmm. there's some plants you could eat, but it doesn't sound good. So I remember saying to Charlie Camarda, you know, my pal, it's like, Charlie, this, you know, what we got to do here. And he goes, what's that? He goes, the only way we're going to get through this is we got to have a big breakfast before we show up. That was the plan. <laughs> but nothing was, idea. I don't know, nothing was going to be open. Or, so we, they, they were at the cafeteria wasn't open. So I was like, we got to get to McDonald's before. And we had to show up at seven o'clock. I remember they had to, these, everything started early and they didn't look, they didn't you were when you were late. And mm -hmm. for the land survival, we were with like regular military people. We, it was us, a bunch of astronauts. We were mixed in with a bunch of um, enlisted young men and women and a bunch of pilots that were getting trained. So they weren't, you know, for us, maybe they, all right, a bunch of astronauts are late, what do you, but with, you know, they were going to scream at us and stuff. So we knew we couldn't be late. We had to show up at like seven o'clock and they were going to search her for food. You couldn't have any food on you. So we can't have any food. We can't take anything with us. So, you know, that's bad. You can't like sneak in food. So the only food I knew I was going to have was going to have already be in my stomach. So we wake up early, and I think we grabbed them Berto Guidoni and a, so whoever else was there. I don't know, I think Frank Caldera was with us, like four of us was sharing a car. And we went to the McDonald's, but the McDonald's wasn't open yet. Oh, we, no. had, we couldn't be late. And I remember us banging on the window. You got to let us in. <laughs> and it's like, no, not open yet, sir. Like, got to let us in. It's national security risk. We got to, we never get through this training unless you feed us. So they let us in and they fed us. And I ate so much McDonald's, I was bloated. So it didn't, I didn't have no, I had no desire to eat anything for the next few. So that was my other tip is that if you're worried about surviving, just eat, have a big breakfast. So that's what right. we did. And it worked. It worked. We went to McDonald's and chowed down before we showed up. That's, that's uh, what that's I remember like, mainly that's about like a, land survival. That's a, like a whole nother survival situation there at McDonald's. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we went, we had a different experience. We went to our, our class. We went to the Navy Sears school, S E R E that stands for survive uh evade resist Whoa. and escape so it's like the pow training right it's where they wow. send all the all the fighter pilots uh, to to like practice being waterboarded basically yeah uh, they torture them wow. there what they do is they actually they stick in there and then the instructors or the instructors at the place are all navy seals okay special ops really Ooh. badass guys just, wow. you know, just really hardcore and and i okay. knew this okay. was like was I bet you weren't going to get a cookie there. <laughs> no cookie. No, 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 <laughs> no cookies at all. Uh, yeah, no. And, and we're walking through the, the uh, field one day 
And I, I could tell, this is how I knew how serious this place that during its regular program is, because we're walking along and Ken Ham, who is my commander and, uh, and my pilot on Discovery, my commander on Atlantis, yeah. he's one of the bad, biggest badass fighter pilots I've ever met. And um, just a real, uh, a real uh, uh, tough guy. And, and, and uh, the only time I ever saw fear in his eyes was this when we're walking through the forest there and he sees a sign with with uh, Russian lettering, you know, Cyrillic, you know, some Russian words on it, and he yeah. goes, "This is." He goes, "We have to turn around." I said, "What are you talking about? I'm I'm doing it. I'm doing the orienteering with the topo map. You know, I got my compass. I'm like, yeah. no, we're supposed to go this way, and 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 I'm I'm pretty sure my navigation is correct." He goes, "No, we have to go this way, the other way." And I'm like, well, "But but," and he goes, "No, we're going now," <laughs> <laughs> because because whatever happened to him when he did this? Because he was a fighter pilot in the navy. Yeah, he had to do the whole training. Whatever happened to him? scarred him for life all right because because <laughs> now the here's the thing when we were doing it we didn't have to learn the s e r e we just had to learn the s because nobody we weren't gonna have to evade we want to be found you know we, we right. don't have to evade anybody Again, we certainly don't have united to resist states. yeah was it? <laughs> continental united states we don't need all that we're not <laughs> right. gonna run it yeah people like astronauts they're not gonna like hunt us so you know it's it's so uh it's not like planet of the apes or something so we, we, got, we got that. so you never know so uh so it so uh but but for these guys you know it's the normal thing is a really bad thing so we we show up there i remember being told that uh all we had to bring uh we, they were going to provide everything they're going to provide the 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 fatigues the canteen the sunglasses you know whatever you need they're going to provide all the equipment the only thing they told us to bring ourselves for some reason was a winter hat. Okay, this is bring your own winter hat. Uh, because it's cold up there. It, it was in the summer, but it's up in Maine and it gets cold at night. And um, so we get there and we're and they they totally outfit us. So I'm wearing this camouflage fatigues, you know. I've got my uh my canteen, my little hunting knife or whatever I'm supposed to have. <laughs> and then I pull out my winter hat and I brought they said bring a winter hat, so I brought an elf's hat, you know, like this. <laughs> the red hat with the white fur and the pom-pom <laughs> and i'm jewish right so i'm like they're like it, it was ridiculous so i'm walking around this full-on army outfit with my with my elf hat looking uh <laughs> and 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 so so the one and i'm walking around the whole day wearing this thing as we, we're out there in the field with our instructors and one of the instructors is this real badass navy steel this huge guy and, he, and they're all like looking at me and I can see them talking and the uh, guy comes, walks over and he goes, you know, if you were here for our normal exercise, you'd be in a world of pain right now. <laughs> and I said, I know, but I'm not here for your normal class. <laughs> so how do you like my hat? <laughs> Oh, and then it, then they all start laughing, and and uh, we had a we had a really good time. But those guys, I, I mean, I would not want to go through that the normal class, no way. Yeah, no, I, 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 we didn't have to. Thank goodness we didn't have to go through any of that stuff. But you know, it's funny you mentioned Ken Ham. Did he ever tell you what happened to him? No. What? what well, what you know? When you say what happened to him, wait, which one of which one of like a hundred different no, things? No, I'm talking about like at the <laughs> school because uh, the reason I'm thinking is that uh, Scott Altman commander on both of my flights and my good friend we were talking about he you know was, he, we would he would share stories every once in a while and he said the toughest thing about it a lot of that stuff was not cracking up <laughs> and yeah. he said like the guys they would like you know they would they would pretend like they were from another country so they would try to do the out of the other country and it some of them were good at it and some of them weren't but if you cracked up then you were really in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so he says, "Hard to see. Just don't laugh. <laughs> you know, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Uh, no. I know. Yeah, got to hold it together. Yeah. But well, those are, those are great experiences that we got got to go through. And they uh, were. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, they, they, we it got us ready to fly. Get us got us ready to fly on the T thirty eight. It did. So although I never I never had to eject, so I never got to use any of that training. Nah. <laughs> the uh, yeah, one goodness. other thing I remember was the, the the graduate the final exercise the capstone exercise at the end of it was uh, we have to like we had to move location so they had a map and a compass you know and um, 
nowadays I just pull out my phone. I use a Google Maps, but now but back use the map and the compass and thing. And we had to go find. We, we had to go rendezvous with a helicopter that was supposed to extract oh, cool. us, right? So we had to navigate from my like point A to point B, and then we had to st- spend the night there uh, mm-hmm. with you know w- without any kind of tents or sleeping bags or anything. We just had to fend for ourselves. Uh, so. So I navigate and I get to, we meet up, like we went in like pairs, but we all, and um, uh, Lee Archambault, he was my, he was my buddy. And, and we ended up uh, with the rest of our group though. We all, we all came from different directions, but we all found the right place and we met up at the extraction zone. And then we had to like spend the night there. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was like the worst possible re- weather. Cause it was like oh. 35 degrees and raining. You know, if it was colder and snowing, it wouldn't be that bad. But if it was, but, and if it was warmer and raining, but it was 35 degrees and raining, miserable weather. Right? And so we made with our training that, you know, we made, uh, they taught us how to make like these little lean tos for sh- like little yeah. rustic shelters. So we made this little shelter. Didn't work for shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the water, it, might, it, it was like, it was, it was like raining more inside the lean to than it was outside. I mean, it was just soaking wet in there and we're freezing cold and we're trying to sleep and it's not working. And, and uh, it's just absolutely miserable. And I look over, I'm in this lean-to with two other people, all right? And my, on the one side, I got Barbara Morgan, okay? Who was the teacher, she was Krista McAuliffe, you know, the teacher in space on, on Challenger. She was her backup. She was, uh, and she, she eventually got to uh, be a full member of our class. So she's going through the training with, with, uh, with the rest of us. And there's Barbara Morgan sleeping right there next to me. And the other side, I got Zambo. George Zamko, United States Marine. Hoorah! Right? <laughs> and so I look over at Zambo. I look over at Barbara. And look, it's a survival situation, okay? I did what I had to do. I'm not saying I'm proud of it, but I did what I had to do. I spooned Barbara Morgan. Okay. I, <laughs> I got right up, and we, we huddled together for warmth, and poor Zambo was left out in the cold. I, I said, look, the dude, you know, given a choice. But... <laughs> 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 What would you I do, honestly? I don't think I don't think George was offended. <laughs> I don't think Zambo was offended. Yeah, <clears throat> Our, <clears throat> he was a marine. Funny. He he he, uh, he told me he used to make fun of the army guys for having umbrellas. They got standard issue umbrellas. The army guys and and, and marines didn't. He said he told me the trick. He said the trick, Garrett, when it's raining, is to pretend like nothing is happening. <laughs> <laughs> You just go walk around, do whatever you need to do. Like nothing is going <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> that was funny. So now, was I remember fine. using an. I was using an umbrella one time to just get from my car into the into the office. I think it was Paul Lockhart, an Air Force pilot. Says, "Put that thing." Or maybe it was Scorch. Probably was Scorch and Marine. Scorch. Put yeah. that. Put that thing away. No self-respecting fighter pilot uses an umbrella. Put that thing away. Yeah. I, our, I remember our last exercise at that thing was similar to your, what you were, you know, we had to navigate somewhere, but it was also, and, and the thing you talk about, like the lean to that you built, right? You had to use the materials that you had that you would come out of the airplane with. So we had to use like, you, you had, even though you went to a different school, it probably was the same thing, right? You use a parachute to make a tent out of and all you know, your, your survival gear is what you had with you. But um, <clears throat> one of the things they taught us was how to take care of someone who's hurt mm-hmm. and you made you know you 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 know you get up you get some uh tree limbs and stuff and you make like a stretcher and you have to carry them through it well so the instructors uh picked me to be the victim because i was the biggest guy so they had me that was my thing i got to like get carried through the forest uh by my crewmates and you might think that sound by my classmates and that might sound like fun but I think I was a little bit too bad. I kept like I'm getting hit against my head was in against trees. You know, I was like, can I just get up and walk here? This doesn't, you know, bang, boom, who's dropping me, you know? And so Yeah, before, yeah, that was before, our, our last before you start moaning too much, you might want to go back and ask them what it was like for them. Yeah, I don't think it was happy. I don't think they were happy <laughs> think, about it either. I don't think like, they had a picnic you carrying your ass. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was the biggest guy, so I was the guy they had to carry out of there. So Yeah. Anyway. Well, All anyway, right, dude, man. I think we're about out of time. Yeah, yeah, this is this That's is it. great. We this survived. A, we huh? survived talking about survival training. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Uh, we made it. I hope. I hope uh, sincerely. I really. I really hope that for those of you listening, watching at home, um, I hope you got something useful out of this. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, uh, which is if you fly over the continental U.S., bring your credit card. 
And if you come now down and you, you, you go to the Starbucks and then have a have a latte, so you have enough energy to walk another couple blocks to the next Starbucks until you get home. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and have a big breakfast. And I always yeah. paid attention to the rescue part of it. Like, never mind killing a. You know, worried about eating a bunny rabbit. Like, how do I get help? How do I work this radio? So they can come get me. That was <laughs> right. what I concentrated on. How do I, you know, make sure they know where I am? So, That's anyway, right. but it was, it was, uh, it was fun talking to you about it, Garrett. Thanks. Yeah. Any That's, that's it. I think. I think That's next episode, episode we'll do uh, 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 a kind of a part two. We'll do advanced survival training. Advanced survival training. All right. Yeah. Look forward to that. All right, All right, man. Thanks, Garrett. Thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for listening. See you next time on Two Funny Astronauts. Two Funny Astronauts. <laughs> Bye-bye.